All right, we're live. Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome <clears throat> back, everyone. Welcome yeah. Back. I just realized in two weeks we're gonna have a Halloween episode. Uh, is it on the day? It is. Nice. It is. Yep. Okay. Thirty first. All right. I guess it's probably been like seven years <laughs> since we did that. Yeah, right? a long time. Let's yeah, yeah. How have you been, Paul? What's what's been going on for the last couple of weeks? Uh, I've been all right. Been busy, uh, staying busy. So that's good and bad, I guess, depending. <laughs> okay. Anything interesting? Anything you want to talk about? Not that I want to talk about. Nope. Just work stuff. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, this weekend I'm going to Vegas for a music festival. That's pretty exciting. Okay. Who are you seeing? Or like, who's the yeah. one that you want to see? The big one or whatever. I guess the big one is My Chemical Romance, but the festival nice. is when we were young. I went there last year for this. Oh, right. That was like a whole shit show, right? Last time. That was two years ago. Okay, two years Last ago. Last year, right? I successfully went and it was totally fine. So okay. I'm doing that again this year. So. Good. Yep, that'll be good. That'll be a fun one. I also just uh just booked my next Europe flight trip. Okay, nice. January. Okay, yeah. Um, I haven't quite decided where I'm going to go yet. But my tickets fly me in and out of Barcelona, and then I'm gonna just get a, a cheap flight somewhere else because I did Spain earlier this year. Yeah. But I couldn't say no to the tickets because it was three sixty round trip. That's extremely nuts. cheap. Holy shit! Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking Portugal, and then I'll go down to Morocco. Okay. And then that'll be the first time I've ever been to Africa, which would be pretty cool. Sure. Yeah. So I'm thinking that, but like I haven't booked those those smaller flights yet, but they'll be pretty cheap once I'm over there. For sure. Yeah. Cool. What about you? Watching anything cool? Um, I got to catch up on um, oh my god, what the hell is it called? Um, Agatha All Along or whatever. Yeah. I'm missing this week's episode. I Me started too. getting a little bit more interested, I guess, in Only Murders, but I just don't like this season. I decided it's just a slog to get through for me. Yeah, I think it got a little silly. Like you saw the episode where they go to the sisters' house. Yeah. Uh huh. That was ex that was extremely goofy. It's it's been a very very goofy. It's weird because like the subject matter you would think for this season of them like being kind of in in imminent danger maybe the whole time it would be a little more serious. But it is the by far the silliest they've been. <laughs> yeah, I think it's kind of been getting more and more like this. Like it's the flanderization yeah. of it all. Every character is kind of becoming a bit more of like a a spoof of themselves. Yeah, yeah, oh. for sure. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I'm not really feeling it, which is too bad because that first season is still just incredible TV. And sure. The second yep. season, I don't remember very much, but I, I remember liking it. The third, I felt it started to go down a little bit for me. And this one is just way worse, though, than all three of them. Third, so. third was That was the one with Paul Rudd in the stage play. Sec oh, second was the one where Mabel was framed and stuff. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I, I like don't remember. I don't remember a lot of the second one either. But yeah, anyway, Shrinking's back. I haven't started it yet. Um, I'm probably gonna wait for most of it to come out, and then I'll subscribe to Apple and scoop it all up. Right. And hearing good things about that one. Yeah. I need to catch up on Penguin as well. What I've what I have seen, I've really liked. Is there anything else you're watching currently? Or are those the big ones? I feel like there's I something else I'm forgetting. I think that's all i'm watching of current stuff yeah yeah cool all yeah right. all right well let's talk about some video games then we've been playing some video games about two weeks worth of video games um this is the top down perspective i'm sean booker paul fleck <clears throat> and paul what have you been playing uh so since last we spoke um yeah, because we didn't do an episode last week. It just didn't work out. We were planning to do a Silent Hill thing to get ready for the the remake. Yeah, so last we spoke, Silent Hill remake, the Silent Hill 2 remake didn't come out yet. It has since come out, right. and I spent about the last week uh, picking away at that, about two to three hours every night or so. Uh, that, that game is long. <laughs> like, they padded that shit out quite a bit. That, oh, like in a bad way? You don't like it? No, I, I really, really like it. They oh, they expanded okay. on every part, I'll say. 
and maybe like it's just misremembering but like I think the initial playthrough of that game back then was like maybe six hours total of like looking around and kind of getting lost or whatever. This was, I think, 23 was my total count, 23 hours of it. Wow. Okay. And uh, most of it is horrifying. (laughs) That game is real tense and just gets, it's one of those games that uh, I, I can't remember who said it, but some, the way they put it was every time I think it's pretty bad, I just know it's going to get worse. It's like, yeah, it God. consistently okay. just turns more and more hellish. And uh, but this is good, though. You're, you're, you liked the remake. It's awesome. Yeah, it's so good. Uh, Silent Hill 2 is one of those games that was uh, super important to me growing up um, and kind of like shaped about shaped a lot of what I like in horror games in general. Uh, so to see them kind of take on the mantle, do it justice, expand a little bit on it or whatever. I think they did a very good job, especially because a lot of people didn't have faith in Bluebird team to do well at all. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just happy for them. I'm happy that they actually I feel like that was it, kind of the know. big narrative leading up to this was this is a pretty like important game, like an yeah. all timer for horror fans. Um, and then Bluebird team does not have a great track record. So, so Bluebird getting... team has some good games, specifically observer, I think is just a fantastic game. And I think that people, just uh, sleep on it too much. Very cool setting, very uh, good horror stuff in there. The problem mainly is is that they did the medium, and the medium is yep. pretty much like, like if you put the title Silent Hill on that, which you probably could have, it's very much that sort of game of you walking around a creepy area, then it going into like a hellscape every now and then, or whatever. And that game sucks. That's kind of the problem, is that, it, they kind of did like their take on what if Bloober team did Silent Hill and it blew. So people were like, oh shit, they actually have the keys to the car now though. Uh, so like, I understand why people were a little shaky on it, but um, no, they hit it out of the park. Very, very good. Yeah. I feel like you, like it, it wouldn't have mattered which team you gave like the IP to, there would have still been some trepidation about like, totally you are treading on like, like, like sacred holy ground. ground here yep, for sure this is a big deal like don't screw this up and they didn't they in fact added to the experience i would say it's very cool nice. very good game uh so, so big, big shout out to them so what do you want next a, a different uh silent hill remade or a new one? Oh, i always want a new one because i one. i like to go back and replay the old games too like I, as far as i'm concerned besides some dated controls there's nothing wrong with silent hill 2 og it's been 23 okay. years and it still plays fine. Um, so I always want a new thing, but if they remake one, I would love to see them redo uh, the room Silent Hill four. Cause there's some really cool ideas and really good shit in that game. But there's also a lot of just like mindless, boring running up a staircase while things chase you and <laughs> like just crappy game design decisions uh, mixed in yeah. so i think it would be really cool to see that fully realized that was a cool game okay uh yeah so i, should I guess quickly mention um john's not here he if you hadn't noticed he went on a vacation yeah we found out about him. that like a day ago <laughs> actually it sounded like he found out about that even a day ago he was saying that it was a extremely last minute thing so makes sense but yeah that's why he's Good not here him. yeah um, so I guess next I'm trying to decide what what to do because there are a bunch of new horror games that I want to play still, but also like I kind of want to keep riding this train and just do Silent Hill 3 now and then 4 and like, because why not, right? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, sure. not really sure where I'm going next, but that's uh, been basically my last week. Okay. Um, so I mostly I've just been playing uh, a game I can't talk about, but a game that I can finally talk about and I wish I was on the show last week um is metaphor refantasio nice uh, this game is is really good i'm actually kind of shocked that everyone seems to be loving this game like the oh. reviews are like out of the park for this everyone's really liking it i guess i shouldn't say like i'm shocked because i also think it's very good but i'm just surprised like everyone like in a like, pleased way board. you mean not like uh what the hell sort of thing but like that's yeah because cool. yeah. you know just yeah, sure. It's not it's like it's a new IP. There's there's a ton of persona in it, but it is technically a new IP, so that you know that always comes with with some unknown, some uncertainty. Yeah. Um 
but no, it's it's really good. We talked a bit about it when uh, a few weeks back when John had played the demo. Now I can talk about pretty much anything. It's real long. Sure. I have put 30 hours into it. And in game clock, I'm in. What I'm assuming is August. I, technically, they don't really say the months, but I'm in whatever month eight is, which I'm assuming is August. Um, even the like review, like the embargo sheet that they sent uh, ahead of time. I was like, please don't talk about anything that happens after like mid September. I was like, yeah, you know, dude, I'm not even, I'm not even done with August. And I'm 30 hours in this game. Um, so it is a big game. I'm hearing it's in like the 80, 100 hour mark. Which you know, going into this, I this wasn't really on my radar. Okay. You know, I I, I kind of stick to the general like I'm gonna do one RPG a year kind of thing. I already put a hundred hours into rebirth at the beginning of the year so i was good mm -hmm. um but you know this came across my email so i was like yeah sure i'll you know i'll, I'll try it out and stuff um and i'm kind of hooked like i I might okay. finish this game so awesome it's it's super stylish if you've seen any of the you know cut scenes even like the menu system like it's it, it if it's persona you know it's going to be stylish as hell yeah Technically speaking, I don't think it's like a, a crazy looker in any way, but you know, it's very stylized. So, uh, from like a from a stylish visual perspective, from an artistic perspective, looks really good. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to think outside of like story stuff. What I can really talk about the job system is really cool. Uh, any character can be any class, and then to get like the level two two versions of the classes, you need to kind of combine other classes. So. For example, there's a knight class you get early on and a mage class. But if you want the mage knight, you need to have like perfected the knight class and then gotten halfway through the mage class to unlock the mage knight and stuff like that. And they, they mix all these other ones up. Sure. Class is super different, super unique. And what, what's also really cool is the way you're unlocking or getting access to the further classes is by strengthening bonds with your like allies and whatnot. And right. those also come with perks that are pretty great which can be stuff like now all the stores give you discounts now you find more um like crafting material when you finish enemies now you get more xp so like getting your bonds up is super important and useful i also think the story is just really good and like i was kind of surprised at the subject matter it's all about like classism and racism across yeah. this fantasy world mm -hmm. like your team is made up almost on purposely from people from different races and tribes. Like everyone has different ears. Some people have horns on their head. There's a race in this game where they wear cages on their head. Okay, sure. Um, yeah. And you have these things called Royal virtues, which are like courage, um, wisdom, imagination. There's like five or six. And w one of them is, Oh, one of them is tolerance. And, as you, if you talk to the people, there's there's always someone in like the town who's from like the the face or the head cage tribe. If you like talk to them, your tolerance will go up, and you'll like learn more about. Oh, this they're other like the tribes. world's pariah or something. Like, are they're the, like the dark elves of this world or something where everyone hates them? No, I would I wouldn't say that because okay. everyone seems to fucking hate every other race. Oh, so it's like real life. Team. It's like real life then. Got it. Okay, cool. <laughs> except your team. Your team is like, no, we're good guys. We don't like racism, and that's why we need to become the king. Because we gotcha. need to squash all this and stuff. So um but everyone else is just like, oh, these filthy, you know, insert whatever the race is. They're they're just they're no good and stuff. And they'll and yeah. like it seems everyone just hates any other tribe, which is yeah, we are. Yeah, bit bizarre. It's and topical. Weird. Um, yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it also goes to like some pretty dark places where they'll just like murder some like pretty main characters in like cold blood, like beheadings and stuff will just happen. Like they're not afraid to just be like, yo, this is a medieval setting. And when shit goes wrong in front of the crown, they're going to like kill you on the street. There, There are hangings in the street happening and stuff like that so like it, it gets pretty dark uh, my fan favorite character um heisme the, it, he's he's like he's like the fourth character you get he's from this race that where they, they they're like bat people okay they're probably the most like unique looking everyone else is pretty much kind of humanoid but maybe has horns humanoid but has uh 
rabbit ears. Or humanoid, but has a tail. Of course. I mean, I've humanoid, seen hentai. But I, they know. Have a cage I, I know. I know all face. of these people. Yep. Yeah, but th- but then then there's the bat people. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I forget the I forgot the name of their race, but um, he's he's super cool. His backstory is all about how he lost his son, and then he went into hiding. He used to, and then. And then there's the whole arc of like when you're getting him and then the like the enemy you're fighting is great. Like, I think the voice acting is really good and the writing is super interesting. Like, it, it really hooked me as someone just coming into this being like, OK, I guess I'll see what's going on. And, it, you know, I wasn't following any of the previews or anything. So in my head, it was like, I don't know, it's going to be high school kids, but it's medieval. And like, nah, it's not that it's not. It's like it's pretty serious. And that's cool. That is absolutely cool. So, yeah, that's great. Um, so I'm liking it. I would recommend it. But again, it is a massive, massive JRPG. Yeah. So, you know, get ready for that. I was also thinking like, you know, when it comes to like the Persona teams games um, at studio, it seems like I always end up playing like the obscure, like one off ones and like not Persona. Because sure, if I look at my history with this studio, it's Catherine. Yep. It's Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Yep. And then this. Sure. Like I'm somehow just like dancing around all the like the main line, all the Shimagami Tensei. I'm dancing around all Persona and I'm just picking these like one off weird ones somehow. And it's not even on purpose. You have played like a Persona game, though, right? Just not a lot of it, I assume. No, I don't think I, I have. Oh. I played a, a little bit of some Shimagami Tensei ones like okay. on the DS. Hmm. Devil cool. Summoner, Devil Survivor, one of those ones. But no, I don't think I've ever like booted up a Persona one because these are they're such massive games. Yeah, they are. They're huge. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really liking it. I'm probably going to keep playing that. Um, I hope to finish it. But again, there's there's always a lot of games. Yeah. Very true. And that's been I've been playing that for like, I don't know, the last month or so. So I'll, I'll keep going with that. And that's all I can really talk about this week. Nice. So let's do some news. We got about two weeks to go through, so some of this is going to be a bit old, but um, I tried to grab just kind of the most interesting stuff. Yeah. This is kind of a two-part one because some of it is expanding, but the the beginning of it was that a couple weeks back, we were getting a bunch of reports originally from Bloomberg that Ubisoft might be getting sold, um, sound, sounding like Tencent might pick it up and bring the studio um, private as opposed to being public because of, because of a series of like of like i don't know shortcomings maybe you can call it uh we got kind of the word of um star wars outlaws not selling as well as they had hoped uh assassin's creed getting pushed um ubisoft has responded with quote or i'll just read the the article here ubisoft said it quote regularly reviews all its strategic options in the interest of its stakeholders and will inform the market if and when appropriate so just absolutely no answer because yeah right Everyone's talking about every buying everyone all the time. That's how business works. Yep, true. So, who knows? But it would be Tencent, uh, which currently has a ten percent stake in Ubisoft, um, and then the Guillaume brothers, who are on the board. Um, which I didn't, I didn't realize. Like, I didn't realize Ubisoft was like a family company on the board. There were five Guillaume brothers. Oh, I only <laughs> knew, knew about the main one, the guy, the, that, the one that you hear about. No, there's at least the harasser. five of them yeah. working at the top of Ubisoft. It is a family company, where is how it started originally. Crazy. So, okay. Um. So who knows? That would be that would be pretty wild if it got bought. I think you know, hearing other people reporting about this and talking about it, if Ubisoft kind of like tanked in some way, or yeah. like, like you. That would almost be devastating for the games industry because of how many people work at Ubisoft. Yeah, I mean, I've kind of grown to hate Ubisoft, so I'm glad to see them die, personally. Well, I am absolutely not glad to see them die. That is so many jobs that would just be lost. Like, yeah. we're already having a bunch of layoffs in the game industry, but Ubisoft seems to employ the most game developers. <laughs> so I would hate to see them go, like, spiral down. Absolutely. me. Um, on the other hand, this was a this was like an announcement on like a Sunday. This was like a super weird one. Uh, three four three, uh, the developers behind the most recent few Halo games, changed their name to Halo Studios. Yeah, I saw this. 
which is you know okay like whatever it was weird that it was it was on a sunday kind of makes you wonder like were they trying to hide this news because no one's working that day and stuff but um uh they uh, they also announced uh they have no specific game t- that they were announcing but the next series of halo there's going to be several projects mm. and they are moving halo onto unreal engine 5 this had been uh touched on I remember months ago we were talking about them maybe doing this, but mm-hmm. here's the official announcement. They didn't put out any footage or anything, but they put out some, I don't know if you would call it concept art, some like, some some artwork of like, here's what Halo could look like in Unreal Engine. So it's not just like someone drawing up a concept, it's it's them actually showing what a Spartan would look like, what the, what the blade, what the sword, I forget the name of the sword, would look like. Um, so, I mean, it looks fine. Unreal Engine can look like tons of different stuff. Yeah. Uh, Ultrapath Traveler is made on Unreal Engine. Like, you can make Unreal Engine look like whatever you want, so. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Yeah, I don't... Why would you change the name? 343 was already, like, the number. Yeah, I don't understand either. Part of me was thinking, like, is this some weird, like, legal loophole for something? <laughs> like, it's weird to me, too. Yeah. So... Anyway, more Halo to come. I I was fine with Infinite. I'm kind of surprised they just like abandoned that. But did people hate oh, well. Infinite? Because I enjoyed it enough. But I also don't care about like multiplayer and deathmatch and stuff. I know that's where a lot of people had issues on launch. Yeah, if I remember the the multiplayer was getting panned at launch, but they worked yeah. on that and fixed it for a while. Yeah. And, you know, the, hey, 343 do, does that. Remember the Master Chief Collection came out yeah. in a very sorry state, and now it's, like, one of the greatest love letters to any game franchise ever. Like, that's an incredible collection of games, which I don't know if anything rivals that. Um, yeah. Maybe maybe some of the Atari Gold collections, but those are kind of more documentary-esque. It's kind of a, a different thing, so... Mm. You know, speaking from my perspective, I liked Infinite. I enjoyed yeah. the open-world shift, um, and I had some fun with the multiplayer too, but you know, I'm not the hardcore. Right. Who really knows? If I had one knock, even, and again, I'm not the hardcore. I don't really care about the Halo story. Um, they seem like they just don't really know what to do with the story. But, you know, they finished three. They started up some new stuff with four. Kind of forgot about it and did something in five. Yeah. Kind of forgot about it and did something different with Infinite and just kind of like, so I don't even know if they have, have a real plan. Maybe, maybe they're going to have a better story going forward. Yeah. Personally, I think you got to move on from Master Chief. Yeah, that universe is pretty cool and big. You could do some good stuff. I mean, ODST is one of my favorite Halos. So like, sure. definitely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Reach is a really cool one, too. But also, no Master Chief. Reach but, is um, yeah, I don't know. Just the idea of like, let's keep going back to Master Chief. Like, it makes me think of like Star Wars, where they're like, "Yeah, what if we keep going back to the Skywalkers?" Y- yeah. You know, this everyone likes the Skywalkers, right? And it's like, oh, again, we got to go back to these. Like, can you do any? And like, and that's when Andor like Andor. gets everybody Andor doesn't excited. Have anything? Yeah. yeah. Like, do something <laughs> interesting. But it's almost like I could understand when you keep adding zeros to the budget. They're like, well, we can't let this be risky. What do we yeah. know? Sells Master Chief. Yeah, totally. So. All right, here's a quick little tidbit. Um, the the Alien Isolation Twitter account posted, in celebration of the 10th anniversary, a message from our creative director, uh, Al Hope. For a second, I was like, did this say AI Hope? That's, <laughs> that's where my brain's at these days. <laughs> the great AI Hope. Yeah. Um. Today, I'm delighted to confirm on behalf of the team that a sequel to Alien Isolation is in early development. Yeah. Wow. That's Are cool. you excited? You must like the first game, right? I do. So I did. I loved the first game when it came out. I tried to revisit it about a year or two ago, and like you could, you could use a new one. <laughs> I think it's pretty old, that one. I feel like this game, like a lot of people really like this game. Uh it's good. Yeah, you, know, you don't get a lot game. of big budget horror games. Totally. Um, and I feel like when it comes to like lists of some of like the all time greats, this is definitely one of the more recent ones. Um, it also isn't just like Five Nights at Freddy's. I feel that's where right. I feel like horror games have kind of gone to is like 
what if we did like an asynchronous multiplayer that would make people scream on Twitch streams? That or um, mascot horror stuff. So like Poppy's Playland or whatever is a big one. There's that new like, what is it? The Amanda, Amanda the Sheep or like there's a bunch of these. Like, I have no idea. I, those last two names, never yeah, heard of. There's this big trend in horror now to kind of try to do the Five Nights at Freddy's thing where there's like a horrific situation that you're in with like kids mascots or animatronics or cartoon characters and that sort of thing. Sure. I ask you as, as the one who who has played it what, what would you want from a sequel would you want kind of alien isolation kind of again maybe a little bigger or or do you want aliens isolation so multiple aliens or more action focused when you say i don't that? know how however you want to take that i'm just kind of like the way the movies went is they did multiple aliens they made it more action that's not really what alien isolation is but i mean like what do you what do you pick what are you hoping for yeah, probably just honestly, Alien Isolation again with a different setting or whatever. Maybe something actually on planet for like a bunch of parts or something. Uh, new yeah. engine, basically just bringing that idea into the new age here. Because when was it? Was that twenty like thirteen or something? The first well, it's one? ten years. This was the ten year anniversary. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And like that game definitely feels like it could use an update. So just do that shit again. Like it worked. Yeah. From, from an outsider perspective who will never play this, um, yeah. I would kind of hope that they would try and keep it to like the singular alien, maybe, yes. maybe a second one just to, but cause I've played some aliens games recently where, you know, multiplayer shooters, whatever that one recent that was on game pass fire team or whatever. Is that what it's called? Yeah, It was like something. half a year ago or something like that. A while. Yeah. 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 Um, like those aren't scary because it's, you know, right. I'm playing left for dead basically. Yes. Um, right. I feel like if you come out and say, we're doing a sequel to isolation, that means something as opposed to, Hey, we're making a new alien game, which is a lot, which everyone keeps making a new alien game every like two years. Right. That's cool. I know a lot of people who loved that first one and I'm glad they're getting a win here. Yeah. It would be kind of cool if they did. Maybe like a Romulus like type thing or some like you could add a part where eventually there are more things than just a single alien uh, and like ramp it up harder or something. But the, I definitely think at the very least you start with the one again. Do you want it to turn into like an action game? I feel like I've, no, no, not I'm action. hearing all the time. Just I'm hearing shit. a lot of it's like horror games. They often go from like slow you know scary and then by the end of it it's like now yeah. you have the rocket launcher here we go right yeah no i i definitely don't think you want that or at least i don't think i want that from that series now that's sure. not what i want all right some updates on a laid off team um so if you remembered somewhat recently the humble publishing group was laid off um so Humble Games has so Humble Games the like collection of games. You know they sell comic book collections and stuff. Pay what you want. Those are those are still there, but they were also publishing games on the side. That whole team was laid off. That team has regrouped, and they are back as a new stu studio t company, whatever, called Good Games Group. Hmm. Um, I don't think they've like announced any games they're publishing. This was just this studio was announced nine days ago. Um, but good to see that they're still sticking strong. I'm wondering if we'll hear something soon about uh, Annapurna Interactive. If they're going to have a new studio sure. pretty soon, because there was already hints that they were trying to put something together, but good for them. I hope they get some work and get to keep publishing games. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Can't wait to see what they do. Great. New, new Nintendo hardware. You must've heard about this, right? Last week. Uh, no, I don't think I did. Oh, yeah. OK, about I clicked on it. Yes, I did hear about this. OK, so Nintendo announced Alarmo. Yes. The Nintendo I, sound clock. Of course. It is a smart alarm clock. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't even know, man. So it, to give a little bit of backstory, Nintendo had an FCC filing a, a few weeks ago of some interesting patents. And people were like, what could this be? And it involved like sensors to detect movement and whatnot turns out it was for an a smart alarm clock that 
will play you game sound songs to wake you up. Um, and you know, the longer you take to wake up, the, the, the crazier the songs get, you can like collect coins while waking up. Pikmin can drown if you don't wake up fast enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's Nintendo being weird. Like every now and then Nintendo's like, here's a weird thing. Yeah. Did they did, um, did they do the same thing of like, you shouldn't buy this if you sleep with somebody? Like, is that the same thing for this? Uh, I think so. Yeah. So there's like a whole fact, and I think it does say like it can't tell the difference between multiple people in the bed, which makes sense, of course. Um. So I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. You you could you could do it like I did, but I don't, they did say it it is uh, compatible with all bed sizes. That was in the fact. Okay. Okay. So thanks. Good to know. Yeah, that's great. Um. You can pre-order it now if you're a Nintendo Switch Online member, I believe. Okay, awesome. And I, think, and I, I know am. it is all it is already for sale at the Nintendo store in New York. That's how CNET got one the day of. Awesome. And I, I put I put together our little first look video for for work. Hey, that's great. I mean, I've been looking for an alarm clock, and this this thing must be like fifty bucks, right, or something like. Where can I pick one up? Isn't it? I oh, actually, yeah, a hundred, right? Yeah, it's a hundred and fucking thirty U.S. dollars or something, isn't it? No, I, I, I don't think it's a hundred and thirty U.S. It's hundred thirty Canadian. Canadian. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, but a hundred dollars. Yeah. I, when I heard that price, I was just clock. like, no, they're like, if this was like about fifty or sixty, may, like I don't that's know, that's still I a might. very expensive alarm clock. Yeah. I, I bought, I bought an alarm clock. Probably five years ago, like a normal ass alarm clock. Yeah, it was fourteen dollars. Works great. Yeah, if you go to like Goodwill, there's probably like five bucks or something, like the thrift store. For, to be <laughs> honest, I usually use my phone. Yeah, I think it, the whole world usually does. Yeah. Um. So this is definitely like a novelty, an expensive yeah. novelty. Uh. I also I could not imagine using this in a room with someone else. Just the idea of like, yeah. like, like, first off, it's pretty rare that I need to wake up at the exact same time as the person, the other person sharing the bed, right? Sure. But let's say hypothetically, we both need to get up at the same time. Just the idea of like Zelda music starting to play, or like Let's or, Go or some like whatever yeah, stuff like yeah. that. <laughs> One of the Zelda ones, so it, so it has like seven, seven or four, four or five uh, games. One of them is Breath of the Wild. One of them is the Great Fairy Fountain. And in Breath of the Wild, those are like some like like yeah. very sexy fairies that like moan a lot. I mean, ever and since those um, are the sounds that, that wake you up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to be honest, though. If I had a kid, I'd probably get them this. This is a cute little like Christmas gift or something for like a six, eight year old or something like that, you know? that's an expensive christmas gift but yeah sure why not and then for the kid i mean that's the nice thing is the you know the kid's probably not sharing the bed with anyone else um but no comment <laughs> uh and anyways it does connect to the internet so the games are odyssey breath of the wild splatoon 3 ring fit adventure ring then, fit adventure is a weird one to me but all right and then more alarms will be added via free updates mario kart and animal crossing Animal Crossing makes sense to me. It Just definitely does make sense. The yeah. chill vibe or whatever, you know. And, you know, they have specific songs for every hour of the day. It makes total sense for sure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, there's Nintendo's like, I don't know, semi-annual weird release that they put out. Yeah. All right. Xbox has announced that starting in November. Uh, so right now they have their cloud streaming. Uh, but it only works for games that are in Game Pass. Starting mm -hmm. in November with like the beta rung of players and what, and then I'll expand. You'll be able to stream more of the non Game Pass games, games that you do own. I'm trying to see if they have said all of your games or if it's going to be kind of like a running wave or whatnot. I think they've already come out and said, um, uh, what am I, uh, Call of Duty will be one of those, but it is also in Game Pass, so that makes sense. But I'm I'm curious if maybe if you just buy it separately, will that also work? But Anyway, this is this was their like original plan when it when they kind of first announced this and they had to kind of pull that back because it's a huge undertaking. Keep in mind to make this work, 
you are basically remoting into a, a console that they have in a basement somewhere. And that console needs to have every game possible. Right. Yeah. Uh, including all the DLC for the game. Because yep. if you own those DLC, you need to be able to access that. So this is a massive undertaking. Uh, so I'm not surprised it took them a few years. But anyway, um, that's very cool. I'm very excited about that. And then kind of a tangential side one is that they've announced coming to Android phones, you will be able to purchase games through their storefront and then play them immediately. And this is kind of goes hand in hand with streaming anything. Um, this is one of those kind of big FTC battles that Epic was arguing about with Apple. So maybe we'll see. So I bet in the EU, they're going to get that as well for iOS devices, but that's cool. Yeah. Neat. Okay, and then this one is just insane over here. So let me let me read this tweet. <clears throat> and I can only read the tweet because it's from a Bloomberg article that I don't have access to. Bandai Namco has canceled development on multiple games, including ones related to One Piece and Naruto. That's fine. Who cares? But the more interesting part, they are also reducing staff through a, through a traditional Japanese approach by, quote, sending workers to rooms where they're given nothing to do, putting pressure on them to leave voluntarily. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, no, I've heard about this. It's fucking weird. This is so weird. So, like, because from, from, like, my understanding, you know, when we talked about all these layoffs and stuff, it was rarely Japanese studios because they had, a, they had like, a, an understanding where they try and, like, hang on to their employees and do right by them. No, not I had do never right heard by. That no, that no, also that's wrong. This. They hold on to their employees. The Japanese companies never try to do right by them. They just don't have a okay. culture where they fire people. They want. So they don't to lay them, them off out. specifically, but it seems like they they try and make them leave. Yes. This reminds me when I was working at like EB Games, and they were like, well, "We're not going to lay you off, but how about we reduce you to three hours a week, the bare the lowest we can possibly do, the smallest shift, and we'll give you one a week." And I was like, "What? What?" what no that's standard for basically every business it's to try to force them out so you don't have to pay them out stuff like it's bad exactly yeah. yep uh so i just love that yeah, like suck, Bandai, japan Bandai. doesn't even try the like oh we'll just like get you to do this or whatever they're like no you're going to an empty room for eight hours <laughs> that's insane right like <laughs> Holy they're not shit. even putting up the pretense <laughs> they're like no just go no, to this absolutely room. like i would think yeah like i'm i'm here i'm willing to make me qa test or something but no just go sit in this room until you are so bored you find a new job yeah that is some like villain level shit on the plus side they pay them like they're still getting paid if they want to sit in a room and look at the wall for eight hours <laughs> Yeah, no, what you're basically doing is you're waiting until this person's spirit is broken. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, holy shit. What? Yeah. Okay. All right, better news. Uh, from Bithel Games, they've announced another Tron game. Yeah, all right. Uh, Tron Catalyst. I like. This is an action game, unlike their last one. Their last one was... um. I remember the last it's one like was a visual Tron. novel wasn't it? it but it was a visual novel kind of a detective game branching narratives and yeah. stuff like that i played through it i quite liked it this is an action game it's set in the same universe i understand uh the character even returns um but it's like an isometric action game kind of remind when i was looking at the trailer reminds me of the um handheld god of war games where it's oh. kind of almost like a top-down view but it's like an action game going on there that's what, that's what kind of reminded me and of gotcha. course you know you're throwing discs around and bouncing them off people and it looks awesome and whatnot so this is cool um i'm always down for more tron games especially I'm, and i'm down for more mike bithel games that guy puts out good good stuff that team uh coming to pc and consoles in 2025 tron identity was the last one it seems yeah. Okay. Right. Which I did like. I do recommend it if you like visual novels uh, on the shorter side, but yeah. Nice. Uh, PlayStation announced that Astrobot is going to be getting its speed run levels. In fact, one of them is already live as of today. It's going to be getting one a week. 
every okay. every week. So they have a set five weeks worth of this setup until the November fourteenth. Um, so some more stages. I'm definitely going to dive back in and play these. I yeah. understand they're speed run focused. Nice. Yeah. I might boot that up. A great after way to keep thing. Astrobot in the mind as we get closer and closer to game of the year. Sure. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Smart. For sure. Um. Wish John was here to talk about this one, but Analog has announced their N64. Hmm. Um, I think he, you you don't have the the Game Boy. I know John does, but what about you? Any interest in in Analog's tech? Yeah, I love Analog stuff. Uh, I think this okay. con- the controller for this thing looks bad though. I like the uh, N64 controller. This is uh, just a um, you, you like the N64 controller. for N64 games. Absolutely, that's part of the like. The thing is, is that I'm playing an X64 for the nostalgia, not to play like these games on bad hardware again <laughs> or whatever. I can like, I can emulate and use whatever controller I want. I like the like setup of the uh, weird three prong controller and c- the kind of shitty picture on the TV and that sort of thing. Obviously, you won't get that with analog. It'll be HDMI and look incredible and all that. Uh, I think this controller. Yeah, is so this down. is actually gonna be like it's gonna be 4K. I'm just trying to look at all the the stats of it here. It's 4K resolution, um, Bluetooth, uh, dual band Wi-Fi. Is it going to have wireless? It can't have wireless multiplayer. Does the Wi-Fi just for like updating the hardware with features or something? It's no, it's probably wireless multiplayer. You would just pair the controllers, right? Like, but it won't. Be, it wouldn't be online multiplayer for these online, games. Online, no. These games no, no, don't no. have that. No, I thought when so you said wireless, I thought you meant for? like in person, like. No, it says it has dual band Wi-Fi. Yeah. Why does this need to connect to a router? Yeah, I don't know. Are there like yeah. updates, maybe for like for the actual? That's um, something. Is is maybe it's just updates for the hardware for the OS? So. Yeah. So they do have a new controller. It's by 8BitDo. It looks kind of like 8BitDo's standard controller, which basically looks like a, a Switch Pro controller. Yeah, it's a basically a Switch Pro controller. That's a good Yeah, except it. instead of a second analog stick, it's... Um, the C buttons. The A and B buttons are down there, and then the, the one analog stick is where you would where you would expect an analog stick to be. Um, people in the chat are saying uh, it does support OG N64 controllers. Yes, because you... It, yeah. It does have the ports on it the front. It has the ports, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you can still do that. A good wireless yeah, I don't know. Uh, one. You think you're going to get one of these, or are you good with what you got? No, so the reason, like, I think analog stuff is awesome, but I also think it's overpriced for what it is, like, for what you're getting. Like, because, again, I have the old hardware. I could emulate this if I really, really was itching to play. Like, I, I don't need to spend 250 American on this thing. Yeah, the nice thing about this is it'll work with, like, modern TVs and such. Yeah, because um, it does have HDMI. It's two fifty. Two fifty is the price. The controllers are forty bucks, which I think those that's pretty standard for like the eight bit do controllers. They're usually always around forty bucks. Yeah, the price for the controllers a, they is have black okay. and white. Yeah, it's cool. I wonder if John uh, pre-ordered one. Have the pre-orders even started? No, pre-orders are starting on October twenty first. I wonder if John's gonna get get one of these. I'm sure he will. I'd be surprised if he doesn't. It's true. He did get the Game Boy one, so. All right, last bit of news story. This happened earlier today. Xbox had a partner preview live stream. Did you check any of this out? Nope. Uh, I actually didn't either, um, but I ran through kind of the highlights, so let's let's take a look at some of them, and if anything jumps out to you, let's let's, let's talk about it. I'll start us off um, with the showstopper. Um, FBC Firebreak at the end. This is the multiplayer game set in the control universe from remedy um fbc stands for federal bureau of control it is basically a three-person cooperative shooter you know kind of looks a bit like left for dead except you're in a weird control world i think this looks awesome that makes sense it's coming game pass i I think like this trailer just looks so fun and like like it looks you know kind of spooky and also really goofy exactly what you would think from control Sure, yeah. Um, what about you? Any of these jumping out at you? No, because I'd have to watch the actual trailer to see what half of this shit is. Uh, Subnautica 2. MOL, 
Great. Yeah. Give me an MLL one got some this. shadow dropped. It's already out. Uh, Mouse is a cool game that I've seen in the past. Yep. They showed more of that off. Uh, but, and then, you know, more of uh, the Lake House DLC, which is October 22nd, which is, oh my God, that's next week. And I have so many games I'm playing. Yeah. I think I bought the expansion, so I think I do own this. Um, yeah. I wonder how this long looks it's scary as fuck. Like, there's a part in this trailer where, like, some crazy monster comes out of, like, a painting and then screams. So that's... Can't wait for all those more screams to happen. The yeah. Full screen. That's true. I actually forgot about the fact that, like, randomly in Alan Wake, every now and then something will just scream in your face in some parts. Just take up the whole... Sc- yep. <laughs> that's forgot. Alan Wake 2 for you. <laughs> It's funny because you always say how much you hate like horror stuff or whatever. And yet you're really now in Wake 2, which went maybe the most jump scary horror I've seen like a survival horror game go <laughs> in a long time. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want that. I didn't have a choice. If I want to be a part of if I want to go on the ride, if I keep up with Remedy. I got to do this. There's so many jump scares in that fucking game. <laughs> All right, let's do some questions. If you want to send a question in, topdownperspective at gmail.com, at TDPE podcast on Twitter. Uh, also, Blue Sky, I'll, I'll mention that with a bullet because it seems like Twitter's dying yet again. Oh, yeah, I deleted Exodus. my Twitter. So I'm not on that at all there anymore. I, I did make a Blue Sky, and I've started following some people. Nice. Um, there's the Discord channel, John's Hero Box. Uh, all, all great ways to send in questions. Uh, this first one from Suku Suku. What would you want in a TDP theme park? A genie. Next question. <laughs> like, is a, is like, that's the mascot that's kind of walking yeah, around probably, the park that you right? can take pictures with? Probably, yeah. Okay. A sure, shitty genie. Sure. I think we got to have, there's a water ride. It's called, like, Game Boat. Yeah, yeah, that's a good off, one. We're just off, like, the memes and stuff. The water ride's Game Boat, for sure. Is, but what about... What about like you personally? Like, is there like a a ride you always love that you just want there because it's you like that ride? Oh well, before that, I was gonna piggyback on what you just said and say you also need the like tunnel of love thing called the Wonder Swans and they're swans or whatever that you ride in. You know what okay. I mean? And what and Wonder Swan because video games? Yeah, exactly. The Wonder Swan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. The one. Okay. Got it. Me personally. Oh, it's like the easiest thing ever. You, I would want like the haunted house, and it's the Resident Evil mansion. Okay, okay. I don't have like a way to tie this into video games, but I just want one of those ones where, like, you you know, you're in the cars and they're kind of sw- spinning in a circle, like they're all going around a circle, and it's yep. like really loud music in there. Like yep. for you specifically, at the Stampede, it's it's always like, like polar themed you know what i'm talking about Do you know that ride so are you talking about one that goes fast so that there's like a lot of force on you or one where the like out the cars would go like up and down like a merry-go-round type thing no these don't go up and down i mean i guess the track does go up and up and and down but it's not like constantly moving up and down but oh. what's cool is they'll stop it and then they'll go backwards oh okay gotcha i thought you meant like something spinning around not like on a track okay i understand no, I mean, the ones that do spin around where your, like, back is against the wall and you're not strapped in, those are fun, too. Okay, sure. But this is the one I'm thinking of. You are, like, in a cart. And so you, it's, like, a cart that could maybe fit three, ideally two people, and yeah. everyone's getting kind of pushed to the side. Right, okay. Right, right. Okay. What's, like, another TDP theme thing, I guess? Thank you. I was trying to think maybe something with like for like what food would be there okay and then that made me just think that like john is such a picky eater so like his stall would just be like the most boring ass food or there would just be a steak tent and you can get a steak because he loves steak his thing would be like pizza probably okay it pizza be, yeah. I'm, i mean it's a theme park that there has to be pizza there has sure. to be pizza yeah Yeah, I can't think of, like, TDP-specific things. It's just, like, video game random set, like, stuff, right? Yeah, I, like... What are there, like, go memes off some of, like, there? the in-jokes, there's probably something about cereal mascots or something. Oh, God, yeah. the play- There would be a stand that's, like, a 
sandwich stand and it would sell hot dogs, like shit like that. Yeah. I would love just a sandwich stand as a fan yeah. of sandwiches. Sure. More like Carnival is a game played from a platform up high like a shooting gallery, but from the top down. It's pretty good. Sure. Got Going it. super literal there. Nathan's Dream Coaster. Oh, yeah. One of the games would just be like capping pen lids or whatever. Pens with lids. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. Very fun. Uh, Jacko 304 writes, Ahoy TDP or Ahoy from the past TDP crew. Just finished the 2018 Game of the Year podcast. Wanted to do, wanted to do another check-in. In 2018, my Game of the Year, Paul's Game of the Year, was Monster Hunter World. Sean's was God of War 8, 2018. And John's was The Messenger. How did these games hold up six years later, in your opinion? Especially since all three games have had either DLC or new entry in the series since these talks. Uh, I stand behind that. I really, I love that God of War game. It's really good. The sequel also really good, but I think I preferred that first one. Yeah, just from way, like a kind of better. how new and exciting it it definitely was. The so pacing I'm, I'm on totally it was better I'm thinking too. The um, and I'm because I remember the second my number two I believe was Spider Man, and I kind of went back and forth on which my which should my favorite one be. Sure, um, that was a good year. But I think I'd still give it to God of War. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Monster Hunter World kind of changed the game for like literally um, for how people look at that series to the point where some people basically are saying Monster Hunter World was the last one, even though there has been one and a big DLC for it ever since that I think in a lot of ways was better playing uh, and they're waiting for Monster Hunter Wilds now or whatever. World was so big that Wilds, for a lot of people, is the next one, even though there's been another game in between. Uh, so it definitely stands the test of time, I guess. Uh, it's hard for me to go back to just because I don't love how they did a lot of the cutscene stuff and the story-heavy stuff that you can't skip. So if I wanted to replay it, I would have to go through like all of that intro shit again, and like that just sucks. So... But um, it's still very good. I would probably still. You're, give it you're still happy as, that it's your number one on that year. Oh, easily, yeah. Nice. I bet John still likes the messenger. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Uh, Dead writes, I bought an Xbox Elite controller Series One on Kijiji for forty dollars, and a Riftmaster guitar for Rock Band Four and Wii guitar games via Series S Devmo Dolphin. A month or two ago have not touched either how do i convince myself to use the things i buy <laughs> i mean i think you're i think you're talking to the wrong people <laughs> yeah i've definitely gotten to the point where like i won't buy something unless i'm playing it that night basically it's very rare what's gonna be my advice is i i have had to do the thing where it's like i i can no longer buy things aspirationally yeah where it's like, oh, I'm this. I I know I'm gonna like this. I I know I'm gonna play it like next week as soon as I wrap this thing up. It is, do not buy it until it's like, oh, I want to play it right now. Yeah, sure. Um, how do you convince yourself to use the things you buy? I mean, you just gotta do it, man. You just gotta plug that shit in. I mean, I guess you do do it. I'm kind of surprised about the 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 elite controller because if you're using your Xbox at all, you need a controller. So use the elite controller. I understand the guitar one. It's like you need to be playing a specific game. Yeah. So this makes me think you're just not using your Xbox at all. In that case, it's like maybe you didn't need the elite controller. I don't know. If you find one of those for forty bucks, you probably should jump on that for later when you do. When you well, do that's use the thing it, is this is this is like the Steam sales thing of like, but it's so cheap. I should probably just get it for later, and and that's you aspirationally buying something, and right. we've determined that's not smart. Right. But at least it's there for when you do use your Xbox again. So at least that's fine. The guitar, the Riff Master. I think you're just gonna have to force yourself to use it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. Like, the, yeah, invite some people over for a rock band night. That's do that. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Phantom Aegis writes, Ahoy TDP crew, the PSP will be 20 years old this December. What are your fondest oh, memories with this UMD device? 20 years old in, in December in Japan. In okay, Japan. So not as old as relevant to me, but yeah, okay. Fondest memories. I remember when it came out, I had terrible Wi-Fi at my mom's house. Mm -hmm. Just just dog shit Wi-Fi. Maybe actually, I don't think I even had Wi-Fi yet. I think we were still just running like just like a wired cable into the computer. So I couldn't do any of the online stuff. This was also kind of early for Wi-Fi. So people hadn't locked down their Wi-Fi yet. So I would walk up and down the street trying to connect to just random neighbors' houses oh, no. to download game demos. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, what about you? Anything? Talk about... <laughs> this is almost embarrassing. The um, buying something aspirationally. I've never owned a PSP, and yet I own a copy of uh, Maverick Hunter X, Mega Man Maverick Hunter X for it. On the thought oh, that so when you've I, never like played with a PSP? No, I've played with the PSP multiple times, but I've never owned like just a normal PSP. But I bought a PSP oh, okay. game for when I eventually do get a PSP back then, and I never ended up oh, getting one. Just never did. What if, do you have a Vita? Uh, no, I don't have a Vita. I have the uh, TV or whatever to play Vita games. Okay, eh, yeah, good, close, close enough. Okay, that's interesting. I I had two psps because one just stopped reading discs so i needed to get another one. Oh, cool so i have two of them what movie did uh, the non-disc one it? it can still play downloaded games mm -hmm. but you know i think back those memory cards were proprietary and they were stupid expensive yeah like it was offensive how expensive those memory cards were especially when you consider how much space you're getting to like standards now would be like here's a 16 gig one for like a hundred dollars it's such a racket it was such a racket yeah it was bad um what, okay i played a whole whack of tony hawk's pro skater underground or tony hawk's underground 2 remix okay Thug 2 remix yep that had that silly multiplayer mode where when you did a trick you would shoot a fireball you had to go around shooting other your friends by like kick flipping just to shoot a fireball. Yeah. Makes no sense. No sense at all. Played a whole bunch of that. Jean Dark was a was a weirdly interesting uh RPG, tactics RPG from level five. I think just got announced that they're doing like a remaster or something about that. Um, so it's finally not it's finally off of the PSP. Okay. Loco Roco was awesome. Loco Roco's sick. Yeah, the best. I remember that was when I started subscribing to what like the official PlayStation magazine or something like that. And as right. part of that, you be, you, I, it was part of the magazine or maybe it was from a website. I somehow joined this like PlayStation insiders club thing, blah, 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 where they would mail me UMD demo discs. So I have okay. like, I have like a demo disc for some random SOCOM and some random kill, whatever kill zone was on the PSP. Right. Okay. Daxter, a bunch of Daxter. What about Patapon? Were you a Patapon dude? Patapon was cool. Yeah, I have the Patapon's first Patapon. Great. The Met, the I, I have the Metal Gear Solid game, the first one. I don't have the Acid ones. Yeah, what would that be? That was Portable Ops, right? And um, uh, yeah, the first one was Portable, portable Ops. Portable Ops and the second um, one's called Peace Walker. Yes. Yeah. I what else? I mean, there's my re there's my most recent story where I was road tripping through Utah and I stopped at a um a pawn shop and found a UMD copy of the Lost Pilots yep. episode one and two and I bought that. Yep. And then you know other other just memories is like they released the PSP Go and you it was easy to pirate every single game. I never had a PSP Go, but I had a friend who did that. All right, BGC Kenny writes: Nintendo announces a live stream event, and during the event, the successor to the Switch is revealed with a release in 2025. However, they then they then proceed to caution our reaction. 
explain that this new console will not have a fully new Mario game, be it Odyssey 2 or something completely different, released at launch or in the near future, as they need to take time to finish it. Instead, they offer Super Mario 40, an improved version of Super Mario 35 with quality of life updates, more features, and a guarantee that they will not shut down servers a year later. And instead, prolong it as much as people play it. Is this a good idea? Is this a good deal? <clears throat> Sorry. Wait, I guess I don't understand what, like, what's the downside here? Like, you're getting the new system, and, like, one day uh, everything else will be on it? Like, what's what's the downside? No, I, I mean, I'm siding with you. I do think the downside is instead of it launching with a new Mario game, which, when does that ever happen? I don't know, because the Switch launched yeah. with um, Zelda, right? And that was it? Like, for Nintendo stuff. I don't even... Did it even launch? Yeah, it launched with Zelda, and then... Because Odyssey was later that year. Later, yeah. Yeah. Um, is it a good deal? Yeah, fine. Like, I, I, I think we're both in camp. Take as long as you need with the game. Yeah. I have enough game. Um, I've also kind of gotten to the point where launch lineups are largely disappointing. Yeah. Yeah, they they can be for sure. Um, so is the idea that like it's going to release just with nothing except Mario 40? Either way, like I'm probably going to get it cuz Nintendo don't release their shit on any other platform, so I'm going to buy it sooner or later. Why wouldn't I just get it now? Yeah, you're going to need it eventually. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> this is kind of an odd question specifically because it's Nintendo and the Switch. You could you could sell us a box of rocks if it was the switch Two. if it somehow worked like there's no way we're not buying the switch Two, or what you know what i mean like yeah but i do yeah, i do get this, the the sentiment of like it would be great to have a brand new mario at launch i'm not expecting that to happen i don't think they're just sitting on a new mario um if they are cool if it's coming later that's fine like i will play the new mario when it comes to the switch Two, and if not then I, if it's going to, you know, here's what I'm hoping for at the very least. It has the backwards compatibility makes things run better. Maybe I'll finally start Bayonetta 3. I have a lot of Nintendo games I could get back to. Sure, yeah. Besides, don't we know that the first game is going to be that, like, My Time at Sad Rock follow-up or whatever? Do you remember? I mean, that, that is the first announced game for the Switch, te by technically speaking. So. so that's a good deal right there. There you go. Right? Exactly. <laughs> get on the Kickstarter, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, I, in the chat, they're saying the last Mario game that launched with a system was on the Wii U. So new Super Mario Bros. U. Right. Yeah. Which is is one of the new branded Super Mario games. So it kind of sucks. Yeah. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, yes. Speaking. But it, it's yeah. fine. Like, I, I don't think any of us have anything against that game necessarily. No, but I mean, I'm going to play 3D World. Of course. Before yes. I play that again. Like, absolutely. Like, that's a, oh, that's the thing with Mario is like the floor is still pretty high. Yeah. But the ceiling is very high. So, yeah. So, like, if this question is basically, is it worth getting it on launch for Super Mario 40? Like, of course it isn't. You're getting it on launch or whatever because you have the money to and you know that you're going to play something in the next year on it. That's why. Yeah, and then there's also the idea of like this thing's not going to go on sale. Yeah. Like it will never be discounted. If it is discounted, it's because GameStop has a refurbished model and they're willing to shave twenty dollars off of it. Which in that case you should be like, No thank you, GameStop. Go back to your NFTs. I'm going to spend an extra twenty and get a new one. Yeah. Like, okay, let me put and, and that's also kind of how I feel about like almost all Nintendo games. It's like, well, you could wait six months and we'll give you we'll, we'll shave twenty dollars off the price and it's like no no i'm good thanks for a twenty dollar saving yeah uh i'll i'll rephrase this question just a little differently to you if this mario super mario 40 is only available to people that buy when the when it releases let's say a pre-order for the switch too Anybody that pre-orders will get this. Nobody else will be able to in the future. We're not going to sell it or put it on anything. This is a thank you to people who are early adopters. Is that enough to for you to be like, yeah, you know what? I was kind of on the fence, but that's like kind of a cool thing that I'll have that some people won't. 
I'll give you two answers. The first answer is yes. The, the longer answer is look who you're talking to. There's yeah. no reality where the minute pre-orders go live, I haven't pre-ordered one. Sure. For me, that's not like the system seller. It's the fact that like you're probably going to get one anyways. It might be enough to just be like, well, I know I'm going to buy one like, in like a year anyway, so why don't I get this other cool thing maybe with it? I mean, I have the OLED. They could literally say, we're not making any more games. They're just going to run better now. And I'd be like, perfect. Thank you. That is what I've been waiting for. I would love to play a bunch of these games better. To be honest with you, that's kind of all I need too. Uh, like, yep. there's, I have nothing to say about it currently. I've been playing uh, Echoes of Wisdom. That thing runs like shit in a lot of spots. That's a real bummer because that game is fucking great. <laughs> so that would be awesome to play it on something that makes it run normal. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like a modern day Switch. Um, you, I'm sold. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Like there's 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 nothing. I'm trying to think like what they could do where it's like I'm not going to buy a Switch. Maybe if it cut me every time I like played it. If no, it somehow you, cut you, me and I was would bleeding, still get one. maybe I would, maybe I would think <laughs> twice. I would still probably get it, but I would, I would hesitate for a second. And that would only be after I've pre-ordered it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's funny. Uh, well, I mean, I'm funny, so thank you. Um, that's it yeah. for questions. If you want to send questions for next week, it's topnumberspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast on Twitter. Blue Sky, the Discord channel, and John and John's PO Box. What is your game of the week? Uh, Silent Hill Two Remake. Uh, my game of the week is the one I can't talk about, but uh, Metaphor is a very good game. Nice. I think I can talk about it next week. No, nope, can't talk about it next week either. <laughs> yep. All right, guys. We'll see you. Thanks for listening. Bye.